What is the world's greatest, most influential invention ever made? The wheel, electricity, maybe the internal combustion engine, or its predecessor, the steam engine? Well, we're getting close. It's actually the predecessor to the steam engine. Many people find it hard to believe, but if you go back up the chain of ideas to the device which taught the world how to make the steam engine, the gas engine, as well as how to make refrigeration and air conditioning, we find the most amazing invention ever made. But most people have never heard of it, even though it is becoming popular once again. It was the first machine which could produce ultra-high pressure with a high-tolerance, tight-fitting piston in a beautifully crafted smooth bore. Now, it wasn't invented by some learned man who had an engineering degree or a scientist. In fact, we don't even know who invented it. It's thought to have been invented over 1,500 years ago in the Philippine archipelago. Now, today, we call this invention a fire piston. It was used by the locals there on the islands to make fire. The originals were made of hardwood, carefully crafted with hand tools. The West first learned about the fire piston in 1521 when the Spanish first landed on the Philippine archipelago. But these are innately crafted devices which some locals wore like amulets on cords around their necks were considered taboo by the church. To even talk about them or marvel at their fire-making power, which the church of course considered to be obviously from the devil, could get you the same punishment as claiming that the sun, not the earth, was the center of the universe. And we all know how that worked out for Galileo. In 1595, the first Catholic university was founded in Cebu, and shortly thereafter, academicians started traveling back and forth between Europe and the islands. Clearly, there is evidence showing that at that time, fire pistons started drifting toward Europe. That evidence is found in the basements of many European museums. Around the time that these fire pistons were coming to Europe, Galileo was having his very first problems with the church. He was eventually put under house arrest for teaching that the sun, not the earth, was the center of the universe. And in his later life he was restricted on his teaching and he was eventually forbidden to publish. But in 1541, just a year before his death, he spent three months tutoring a 14-year-old Protestant genius, a young man named Robert Boyle. Galileo tutored him on many things, including some of the taboo sciences that were forbidden for Catholics to openly study. Now, some people think that Galileo gave young Robert Boyle one of these fire pistons smuggled in from the islands. The reason for thinking this? Well, in his early 30s, when Robert Boyle finished his studies, one of the first things that he did was to have built a large metal fire piston with chambers, valves, and a rack and pinion to drive its piston. He used this device to study and find out just how it is that a fire piston could make fire and yet itself never get hot. Boyle was to eventually understand the dynamic relationship between pressure, volume, and the temperature of compressed gases. These principles would later be used in other devices with carefully crafted pistons which fit into smooth bores, devices which would turn heat into energy, engines which used steam, air, or compressed fuels to power our modern lifestyle. One of my professors once said that the fire piston was, without a shadow of a doubt, the greatest invention ever made. Sadly, the fact that it was considered taboo until the mid-18th century held back our modern era by at least 200 years. That's the reason I feel that the greatest invention, the most influential invention ever made, was the Filipino fire piston.